This is the second module on mechanical design of compressors. On this module, we will cover the running gear. Main components of the running gear are the crankcase and the running gear itself, which com is composed of the assembly of the crosshead, connecting rod, crankshaft, main bearings, and crankcase, and then some auxiliaries like the crankcase, relief valve, and the flywheel. Well, here again, we see the operation. In this case, we will be concentrating on the crosshead, connecting rod, and the crankshaft, and also the crankcase. Going back to the typical cross section of a compressor, on this case, we will use the running gear, which is the left part of the machine, and it is everything from the crosshead to the left. So it is the crosshead, connection of the crosshead to the piston rod, the connecting rod, the crankshaft and the frame, and also the bearings associated with that. As we are making this review of the mechanical components started from the cylinder, we will start on the running gear from the crosshead and we will move from the crosshead to the crankcase. On this module, we will have the same extractor as on the previous one, so for each component, first we will start discussing the function. In the case of the crosshead, we have two different functions. The first one is very obvious, but the second one is, is not so obvious. First one is transmitting power, of course, but minimizing the rod runout and the vibration. So I have to keep the piston rod aligned with the cylinder axis all the time. To explain the second function, we will make use of this sketch. And you can see what is the crosshead. And then we will see the forces from the connecting rod. Here you can see that the piston rod only moves back and forth. So all the forces are horizontal. However, as this uh, crankshaft rotates, the force on the connecting rod has can be split in two components. One is the horizontal force, and this will be taken by the piston rod, and the other is the vertical force. And this vertical force has to be supported by the crosshead. And here uh, we can see a typical picture of a crosshead and also a crosshead installed on a compressor. Here we can see the components of the crosshead. Of course, it is a crosshead body itself. Then you have the shoes or the slippers that are the surfaces that slide. The crosshead pin. There is a pin that connects the connecting rod to the crosshead. Retain in place, just to make sure that this pin is in place uh, at all times and is fixed with this pin. And then you have, uh, may or may not, have shims, and these shims are installed in between the crosshead body and the shoes or slippers, and these are used to help uh, achieve alignment between the piston rod and the cylinder. But there are also other means, as we will see later. This is an exploded view of a crosshead assembly with the same components we have seen on the previous picture. So we have the crosshead body itself, then we have the shoes, shims in between to help keep alignment, and then the method of attachment of the connecting rod to the crosshead with a pin retaining place, a pin bolt, and all the components. We've seen that the crosshead assembly is quite complex, so why? Do we use crossheads instead of uh, just using a local automotive type or engine type of compressor? Well, there are a number of benefits that merit all this uh, complication. The first one is that makes possible a double acting cylinder design. With an engine type uh, cylinder, is, you can only have a single acting. So this by itself is, is a great benefit. The second benefit, which is also very important on process equipment if you want to have reliability is that this device, the crosshead, provides greater stability to the piston and thereby reducing ring wear. Also permits a longer stroke and greater capacity, allows the use of a narrow piston and larger valve area for greater efficiency. Uh, losses in the valve are very important for the compressor efficiency, so if you have more space to install the valve ports, you can increase efficiency. 
And the last one is related to safety and also avoiding cross-contamination as uh, the cross can uh, provide isolation between the crankcase and the cylinder. The last benefit is that you may have a stronger piston design in higher operating pressures. On the previous slide, we've seen that the crosshead shoots a uh, separate component, but this is not always the case. We can have adjustable shoes, as like we've seen before, or also integral shoes, where the sliding surface is part of the crosshead body. The adjustable shoes are more common in, in the process compressors, and this is a requirement of API 618. And there are some benefits uh, as they allow compensation for wear and they can be replaced if needed without having to replace the complete crosshead. But the other benefit is also that you can make independent the material of the sliding surface and the material of the crosshead body. As here you are looking for resistance and here you are looking for wear. So on non-API machines or some high-speed compressors, you can have this integral uh, shoes on the body. If the crosshead body is made of aluminium, mm, this material is good for sliding, so you don't need any lining. But if it is made of cast steel, you have to apply a coating of a material uh, such as Babbitt. Crossheads are sliding on the guides that are built in the, in the frame. So as any other variant, you will need to take into consideration which clearance do you need. To do so, we have to have a look to the forces involved. Vertical force is applied to the crosshead and usually doesn't change direction on its revolution. As a consequence, the force is always applied on the same shoe. On a horizontal compressor with opposed cylinders, which is the most common machine by far, the force is upwards on one crosshead and downwards on the other one. And the one that pushes upwards may be subject to detach from the sliding surface. The crossheads also tend to tilt as a result of the lifting action of the lubricating oil. So it's moving, uh, going up and down. As a consequence, the clearance between the crosshead and the guys has to be kept at a minimum. And typically, this is a 1000 of the diameter involved. And the lubricating points are provided on both, on both guiding surfaces, top and bottom. For the crosshead pin, we have two different designs depending on the shape of the pin itself. Most of the machines, they have a cylindrical pin because uh, you have to install this with a minimal clearance. You need to keep this pin in position by some retaining rings or caps uh, at both ends. Another solution would be using a pin that has uh, conical ends. In that case, uh, this uh, shape would match the inside diameter of the crosshead and the pin would remain in the crosshead without any clearance. But this is uh, more difficult to, to manufacture correctly and more expensive. So this is only applied to some high expenses and high demanding machines, such as the hypercompressors. Even more important than the pin on this uh, crosshead assembly is the crosshead pin bushing. The bushings, they can be plain or they can be manufactured with grooves that can be either helical or straight. Until recently, the most popular design has been the groove one and the reason being that it was believed to improve the refilling of oil and therefore reducing the low reversal requirements. We will see more about reversals later. But in recent years, a lot of studies have been made to, to determine what would be the optimum design for this bushing. And some manufacturers that they are using plain bearings at the high loaded areas with top and bottom filling grooves. However, no agreement exists among different manufacturers as to which the best design is. No international standard is imposing a specific criteria on this pushing. And a lot of um, personal preference and user experience drive the decisions many times. These bushings, they are mounted with interference after cooling in liquid nitrogen. So press mounting is, is not a, a good alternative because the risk of uh, scissor in the housing. And an anti-rotation pin is needed to ensure that the crosshead pin bush acts as a bearing for the crosshead pin. Let's have a look at 
how is the lubrication of the gross head pin bushing. This is a schematic piston rod is uh, moving back and forth connecting rod which is rotating on this end but on this end the amount of rotation is very limited so unlike the journals on the crankshaft the crosshead pins do not com perform a complete revolution so here is a complete revolution here is only very limited angle so hydrodynamic lift cannot take place as in a conventional uh, bearing because of this, low reversal between bushing and pin is needed, so the clearance can be filled by the oil in the intervals where the load is in the opposite direction.